these many times passes, and some that they are eating, some as the heart of the sufferings given us by God for us. Since in 1700, the entire area of the frontier, a little new territory, has been there. Through this program, you'll experience the life and times of some of the rich. The wealthy ruler who knew the value of this land and set about taking it. Thomas he built St. Petersburg, providing for his ministry a window to the West. These palaces and the grand traditions of European architecture were both learned and useful to itself. But they were men who had grown tired. For it was Peter who hanged the sanctuary worship in the beginning of his reign. Within the walls of this museum, you will see the engravings and paintings, and the chains and medals, bodies and coaches that mark the pomp and energetic time of Peter. Besides the big signs of the time, society, and even the art and architecture of the Renaissance, part of that was building the capital for St. Petersburg. Peter required the nobility and merchant class to yield him all of their material wealth, art, and riches. The castle was full of princes and people, amassed in the Byzantine tradition of the Russian Orthodox Church. The court brought in new metal colored coins from the Western technology. But still, strong and content sources remain unchanged from the medieval castle. Conquest of the river river delta on which St. Petersburg was built was only one campaign of 21 year war with Sweden, the Northern War, which would last for nearly the entire duration of Peter the Great's reign. By the end of the 17th century, Sweden had grown to be a formidable naval and military power, controlling the Baltic Sea and its coastline and cutting off Russia from foreign trade. Could it be that 
the top city road in Victoria Coast, right at intersection of English and English English, just like in the trees. But you can't be too close to the and not too much time with it. Peter would rest his legs on the support, shaped like a fishhook. Peter collected paintings of two kids and six throughout his life. He was born the fourth child by a second wife of John Alexis the Fair. His father felt like God to the center court, but God was first for her three kids, the older and the two. Peter and his mother lived in a suburb of Moscow, set aside for farmers to provide technical assistance to the nation. Eventually, Peter would hand the chief state to wealth and his tiny son, which served not only as the emperor's puppet, but as the basis for the mighty apparatus of the nation. Unlike many monarchs of his time, Peter himself took a keen interest in the trade. Allowed access to a full education and tutors were a fine station, he taught him about shipping, sailing, the working of his guns and cannons, stonemasons, and pottery. At Royalton, its intellectual freedom allowed the man to earn 2,000 pounds a year, provided he was a success to the business. This is his room at Gilbert. Which isn't his great height, almost seven feet, only he could easily reach the top of it. Distinguished as a young man by a fine but technical spirit, Peter was always the fascinated by the creation of machinery. This church chandelier, produced in the candy shop, was worked on by Peter himself. It was never actually hung where it was intended to be. It remained here, close to the fashion he created. Peter's mind possessed a pattern of unhurried concentration never to do exactly what he wished them to do. He also had the strength and innovative thinking necessary to transform the Greek Confederation of Medieval Sculpture into a modern fashion. Peter the Great and his cousin put their heads together over the glorious and fun year of the year. Nassau was involved in the creation of this lady. When she is a copy of this, it can be produced in 50 years on the surface of the world. 